actually, as I look back now, I wasn't handling it very well. Like my, my mental health was just really suffering during that period. But I was convincing myself that I was okay. Mm. And it was only with hindsight and I look back and I go, no, actually I wasn't okay. And towards the end of that period, I, I actually was feeling very, very depressed. Mm. And then when I, when I got on a Zoom call with some friends and they found out that like I hadn't stepped out of the house at all, they were like, get out, just get out, just go out, just go for a walk. But at that point of time, it was I was so inert already yeah. that it was quite difficult to get out of the house and just go. Hi, this is Jean Danker and I'm so excited that this guest is here with us today. She is an award-winning actress, singer, previously notoriously private and now just smashing the social media game. It's right on. Hello, everybody. <laughs> Thank you for having me. Thank you so this much for being here. This is literally my first podcast I've done in my entire like career. Yeah? Yes. Wonderful. I'm so happy that... Uh... I'm very honoured that you have me on. So let me give you the backstory. When she approached me uh, <laughs> on Instagram, like she DM'd me, right? And she was like, hey, I'm doing this podcast. And at that point of time, um, I think everybody knows I started only recently in around August, started managing myself. And she, she DM'd me, I was like... At that point of time, I was like really overwhelmed mm. because there was a lot of things that I had never had to handle in my entire career of that I have to do for the first time. And so she DM'd me, I was like, I was like, I'm, I'm a very like direct and all, and like blunt person. So I told her, I was like, Jean, actually at this point, I'm feeling very overwhelmed. And it was the truth actually. I was yeah. like, I'm feeling very o- overwhelmed. Would you mind if I got back to you in a while? And yeah. she was so gracious about it. She was like, yes. And then recently, um, <laughs> this photographer that I work with, Walter Tan, huh, he texted me after he shot with her. He was like, hey, Jean, approach you do podcast, right? <laughs> hey, you should do it. Just do it. And then I was like, Oh, yeah, oh. yeah, okay, I should just do it. I should do it because um, mental health is a topic that I'm quite passionate about. Yeah. yeah. So for a long time, mm. um, you didn't do social media. No. You know, you were very private. We actually didn't know anything about you. <laughs> you didn't know any. Yeah. I think I, nobody even knew I was a cat person or whatever <laughs> it was. Yes. Yeah, not at all. And now we know so much about you and I love that. What made you want to get in on social media and do your Instagram and everything? Okay, um, I think when the whole social media thing took off, yeah. I still was very, very protective of my privacy. Yeah. Um, I preferred to be more mysterious. I preferred to be more enigmatic. Um, but, you know, people grow and people change. And um, a while ago, actually a couple of years back, I already had this sort of like an idea, which was that if I didn't start social media my entire career, and I have been, this is my 20th year in showbiz. Mm. My, le- okay, I mean, maybe using the word legacy is a bit overwrought. No. Maybe it's a bit exaggerated. But <laughs> that legacy would be acting only and singing, mm. right? The stuff that maybe people can listen to or watch will just be the stuff on me watch mm. and um, Spotify, yeah. right? And, um, I think I shared with you also uh, the very main reason why I felt like I needed to start social media beyond be- oversharing and telling everybody. <laughs> like you see, we know everything about I you now. I love it. I love it I'm so kidding. much. <laughs> but beyond that, it was that um, I had gone through like really dark times. I'd gone, th- I hit rock bottom so many times. And um, I know how lonely that is. I, I know... Um, how devastating that loneliness is. Okay. And so I felt like if I could use social media to help at least one person feel less alone yeah. and less I, the way I felt, um, then that would be enough. You mentioned like the dark times. Yeah. When you, when you think about the dark times, can you tell us about one particular situation that you felt just your lowest and you felt like, how am I going to get out of that situation? I remember, um, I remember one uh, time... You know what? I'm a very vain person. Like, I have, like, 50-step skincare routine, 5,000 masks. You know, I, I I love to shower. Like, shower is, like, when I'm in the shower. I, I literally, uh, if you walked into my shower, it's, like, for one person, but it looks like it's for sick, a family really? of six. Like, I have multiple shampoos and shower just and because I like, like, I'm very sensitive to smell. Yeah. So, I, I just like having very nice smelly things. Yeah. And so, I'm a very vain person. I like to shower. I like to put on my skincare. But I remember there was one point where I just couldn't get out of bed. 
Like, I literally couldn't get out of bed. I didn't shower. It sounds gross, but it's... Um, it's very real, actually. I I couldn't, sh I didn't shower. I didn't wash my face. I didn't put on my skincare because I just couldn't get out of bed. Right. And I can't remember how long uh, I was, I okay. stayed in bed, but uh, probably that's the first one that comes to mind. Right. Mm. And when you find yourself in this like sort of deep negative space, um, like, you know, unable to move, mm. um, what's the first thing that you do to get yourself out of that space? Like, mm. you know, during that time specifically, maybe, you know, what's the first thing you think about? Or is there somebody you call, some, mm. something you read, mm. something you watch, just to lift you to, to move to the next step? Okay, so to be clear, we are not mental health professionals. I think I feel the need to... to emphasize that here and whatever we share like whatever I share is my personal story and it should not be construed as medical advice huh? um, but to be very honest I, I can't really remember how I eventually got out of that place um, you know memories are quite hazy mm -hmm. um, but if you want to ask me now um, obviously I'm not immune to dark times now obviously I'm not immune to hitting rock bottom now you know I still do especially like you know, when I'm going through grief and all that. Mm. Um, I would... Okay, for me personally, endorphins yeah. are very important. So I kill myself at the gym. And for some reason, like circuit training and hit is the thing that gives me the, the most, like, the boost. Because it's so hard, <laughs> Ray. It is so hard. Yeah, now I'm doing BFT. So wow. it's a more intense version wow. of F40. I was doing F45 before. Yeah. And so it's circuit training. And for some reason, um, the endorphin rush from this exercise works for me, right? Okay, yeah. So sometimes I... Sometimes I really have to drag myself to the gym. I'm sure all of us can relate, right? Gosh. At but least endorphins. you go to the gym. That's awesome. <laughs> you took you that not? step. Well, I've slacked off for so long. Yeah. I, I have a personal trainer who's been texting me. It's like, Gina, when, when are, are you, you coming, coming back? to finish your package? Oh, uh? no. So, yeah. Well, I'll get I'll get to it. I'll get to it. Okay. Yes. Okay. So, for me, I mean, <laughs> beyond like losing weight or, or be staying healthy, the reason why I'm like quite obsessed with the gym is the endorphins. Yeah. So, I can walk in feeling really shitty. And then I can walk out feeling like a warrior. Wonderful. And how often do you go? Like in a couple of times a week, do you try to get in a couple About four or five times a week? Wow. It's actually nearby. I do feel like getting out the house and getting out of that that the bed, the room, yeah. it's important. Because sometimes all it takes is just a change of environment. Yeah. Sometimes all it takes is something to just distract you from, you know, poor me, poor me and I feel so low. Um, so like getting out of the house, exercise, um, talking to people. Like this is one thing I also do when I'm feeling really low is that I, I get on the phone and I call people. This is not very natural for me. I'm, I'm the sort of person that likes to just not ask for help, mm. um, keep quiet and try to settle it myself. But I think in the past few years, I've gotten very good at asking for help. So when I'm feeling shitty... I pick up the phone and I go, hey, like, look, um, you know, can you afford a bit of time to speak to me? Yeah. Um, and and it helps, you know. I, I really feel like whatever you feel, like once it's out in the open, it loses its power. Mm. It 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 gets bigger in the darkness and, and when you keep it quiet. But when you get it out there, like all of a sudden it just like loses its magical power. It's very yeah. odd. Yeah, I yeah. know exactly what you mean. When yeah. it's when it feels some light. All of a sudden, it's broken apart, and you're like, actually, Absolutely. it's not so bad. No, no. yeah, mm. that, that's that's a pretty um, amazing thing. But mm. um, and funny that you mentioned move and get out of the house because yeah. we just had Sharon Owl last week, and she oh. said that as well. She was like, just move, just get out of the mm. house. Absolutely, because you never know what energies hit you and yeah. who you meet mm. and have conversations, and takes you into a lighter and brighter space. Exactly, and yeah. you're not gonna want to get out of the house. That's the yeah. thing. Like you're not. You just have to force yourself. I think I'll give you an example. Like you know, CB, so circuit breaker. Quantify <laughs> <laughs> um, that circuit it was, breaker. It was a really difficult period for all of us because it was the first time we were experiencing a lockdown. Yeah. And for some reason, I did, uh, I just told myself, like, nah, you'll be fine. You're okay staying at home. You're okay being alone. Um, just don't go out. Because we, at that point of time, there was a lot of fear in the air. Like, people yeah. were, were, was catching COVID in the malls and stuff mm. like that. 
And so I really didn't go out, you know. Like, like I have a helper who did the grocery shopping. Yeah. So I didn't need to go out and bought everything online. Yeah. But towards the end of that period, actually, as I look back now, I wasn't handling it very well. Mm. Like, my, my mental health was just really suffering during that period. But I was convincing myself that I was okay. Mm. And it was only with hindsight and I look back and I go, no, actually, I wasn't okay. Mm. And towards the end of that period, I, I actually was feeling very, very depressed. Mm. And then when I, when I got on a Zoom call with some friends and they found out that like, I hadn't stepped out of the house at all. They were like, get out, just get out, just go out, just go for a walk. But at that point of time, it was I was so inert already that yeah. it was quite difficult to get out of the house and just go. Yeah. But so this is what I mean, you know, like just literally getting out of the house, getting some fresh air. It doesn't have to be a very scenic place, but just getting out and have, sweating, mm. you know, breathing in some fresh air, it actually makes a huge difference. Yeah. yeah. So I know one of the biggest reasons that you join Instagram, uh, upping your social media game, <laughs> is because you really want to share what you've been through and help others feel like if they are rock bottom, you're not alone. There's mm. many people out there feeling the same way, mm. right? Mm. Um, how, is, how is that? I'm sure you've gotten a lot of feedback and people DMing you and, and saying, my goodness, you've been of such good help. How's yeah. that been going? I think it's been very, um, it's been encouraging. It's been encouraging because I, I think I mentioned it earlier. It's very, don't you find it very odd that like the more connected we are via social media, the more alone yeah. all of us feel. I, I've always found that to be quite, quite interesting how that works. Yeah. But you, if, if, you, if you realize there are a lot of people feeling very alone nowadays, like for example, they, they will sort of like leave comments which go like, um, thank you for sharing so openly and mm. it's very rare for a celeb to maybe share so in such a raw and vulnerable um yeah and and thank you for for helping me feel less alone yeah um i think that the funny part when i see these comments is that i realize that a lot of people sort of like feel certain ways or have certain emotions or have certain feelings and they think that they're the only ones that have that mm. but because they don't actually speak about it or share with people about it then they think oh yeah I think I'm alone. I'm the only one in the world that feels like that, but it's never the case, right? We're yeah. all human and we yeah. all have the same kind of like, yeah. whether or not, you know, it's distortions, whether or not it's whatever it is, right? We all yeah. have a lot in common. Um, I guess for me, when I write these things, I don't really write with the intent of like, it's going to help 2,000 people or it's going to help a million. No, all I can do is be very very real about what I go through, right? Yeah. Whether or not people connect with it is a different thing altogether. Um, but uh, a while ago, so I had I had been I've been doing like charity work with this organization which is beyond uh, who sort of like do a lot of initiatives with low income families, right? Mm. And I I had I had been helping this organization for a while and previously I'd met this social worker and he had like committed his entire life he, like he's been a social worker his entire life okay yeah. um and recently very strangely um something that i posted which has nothing to do with anything uh, um actually sort of like he texted me and he was like hey like you know that this thing that you did with Chantel, the the longboarding and what i wrote right for some strange reason he connected with it i wrote that you know um like stay you i, I think i wrote about how showbiz is actually an industry that chews you up and spits you out, mm. which is quite appropriate. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Um, and I was just like, I think it, it, I was write, writing in the form of a letter to Chantel and, okay. and I told her like, you know, stay you. Yeah. Don't, don't let that happen to you. Don't let fame change you because it tends to do that mm. for most of us. Um, and I was just like, you know, stay you, right? And this yeah. social worker, she texted me and was like, you know, I didn't really wasn't really interested in that post or the news, but then it kept it kept coming up, and then one day I clicked on it, and for some reason, what I wrote there sort of encouraged him to remember the original reason why he got into social work. Wow, I think that social workers. I mean, to be very honest, I respect and admire them so much more than I mean. For some reason, the world really respects and admires like rich people, people who make it rich, rags to riches, right? But these are the people that they devote their entire lives to helping others. Yeah, They're not paid very well. Um, and facing other people's trauma on a daily basis is not easy. Yeah. It's, it, it drains you, you know, and it probably drains the life out of you. And so 
I also understand that what they do is not easy. Mm-hmm. But for him to just sort of like take that from what I wrote, which is basically nothing to do with anything of yeah. anything that he does. Um, I was very I was very humbled like, because I, I felt like, oh, okay, like uh, even though it, it didn't really connect in that sense, but yeah. at least it encouraged him. Yes. And I did tell him, I, I said, you know, actually I really respect people who do what you do yeah. uh, as a living because for a living because it's it's really not easy and thank you for for all your service for you know the, like the society and he was like okay I'm gonna let the younger social workers know you said this because oh. obviously this is also a group of people who really need encouragement of course mm. yeah and uh, they, they should get more encouragement from all of us they should actually. and they should be paid better yeah agreed agreed <laughs> um, I think you see this is just one example of like um, a follower who has, or a friend who has been impacted by the stuff that you share about. Yeah. So I, I'm sure there's loads more that have have not come forth to to actually tell you about it. So I, I mean, think you're you're helping you're helping people out in a big way. Thank you so much. I mean, I, sometimes I do get comments and DMs that go like, "Hey, like I really appreciate because I thought I was the only one who felt like that." Mm. You never are. You really never are. Do you feel like? When you share on Instagram, does it help you too? Does it does it feel it does. cathartic? It does. I, yeah. I think that recently there was this. Uh, I think Joan Didion, she's the author who passed away, and there was this quote that I I, I didn't realize it was from her. But after she passed away, you know, people will post all these quotes, mm. right? And it was like I only know what I think feel, think or feel about something until I write it. Yeah. Right. She's an author. And I looked at that, I was like, yeah, actually that's me also. Yeah. Because I, I like to I love to read and I love to write. Mm-hmm. But sometimes because there's so much going on in there, yeah. no overthinker paradise, right? <laughs> <laughs> um like you don't actually know what it is until you actually put it down on paper. Yeah. And so I relate to that. For somebody who's, you know, I know the the most important people that you want to uh, touch are the people who are feeling alone and isolated in in, in a negative headspace. What would you like to say to them um, in your own personal capacity of how to perhaps move forward and get to a, a brighter place? Um, I would say this too shall pass. Mm. It always does, even though it doesn't it doesn't feel that way. Um, even though it kind of feels like you're going to be feeling like this forever, it will pass. Um, all you have to do is just hang on for dear life. Like even if you're white knuckling it, like holding on with like trembling fingers, just hold on, it passes. Mm. Yeah. I I know that you have a gratitude jar. I do. And did you start it this year? I did. How is it going? <laughs> it's good, it's good. I I so for some reason I was kind of like, oh no, I think I'm gonna forget to do this. But I put it <laughs> on a place on my table yeah. where every now and then I'll see, I'll be like, okay, I need to do it. Yeah. So I'm a big um, I, I'm a big fan of the gratitude list. Mm. So sometimes when you're just like feeling very poor me, poor me, like why is why is God so unfair to me? Why is the world so unfair to me, right? Mm. A, play, a, a way to get out of that, that mindset is to write down uh, just a gratitude list of the things that you're grateful for. Mm. And if you... If, if you do it regularly, you will realise that just very simple. Um, having a roof over your head, yeah. having like food to eat, having clean sheets. Yeah. All these things are, are not a given for people in different countries. Yeah. You know? And so just writing that, just doing that physical like thing of writing down that thing, it actually helps a lot. Mm. And you kind of like look at it, you're like, yeah, actually, there's no poor me. I'm, I'm like, I've got a good life. Yeah. You know? How often do you... Pop a note in. Do you have, like, a I'm trying to do it week. weekly. Oh, that's good. So what happened was like, uh, uh, just before New Year's Eve, I think that these people that I follow started um, posted about this, that, you know, take a gratitude jar, do it weekly, write down some, one thing that, ha- one good thing that happened to you per week and then put it in. Mm. And then at the end of the, the year, 31st uh, December, open it and read it. Yeah. Um, and I thought that was so nice. That was, yeah. and, and it's also the physical act, I feel. Mm. Yeah. You know, looking, let's say like maybe 10 years ago or 20 years ago, Mm. um, you know, if you're looking forward at yourself now, would you, could you foresee yourself being this open and and, and sharing? Absolutely not. Absolutely not. Zero chance. (laughs) I wouldn't, like honestly, if you had told me even like two years ago, I'd be managing myself, I'd have started social media, I would be oversharing the way I overshare on social media. I would have t- I would have laughed at you. Yeah. Honestly, life has a very life and God has a very way, interesting way of surprising you. Yeah. Um I would not have expected this. Sick. 
So, Ray, and we know it's your birthday tomorrow. Oh, it's my birthday. It's, it's your birthday. birthday. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> yes, it's your birthday tomorrow. It's your birthday. <laughs> well, uh, so we prepared a little something for our little segment. <laughs> And uh, of course, first we, we we've got a cake, we've got a tiara. Can it can it all come in right now? You got me a tiara. A tiara! <laughs> oh my gosh! What was it that I watched that is like you got me a tiara? I think it was a show. Happy birthday! Oh gosh, it's the first time anybody <laughs> has given me a tiara for my birthday, and I love it. So I'm gonna wear it for the rest of the day, no yes, matter what. <laughs> yes, no matter where I go. <laughs> Wear it for my birthday dinner tonight. Uh, yes, please. I love it so much. Oh, okay. And so we've got a cake here, and you know, uh, one of the things that we do with all the guests is, you know, to do something that takes your your mind in out of a, a darker space, space and yeah. just to, to to do something fun. So we thought it was your birthday, and we know you do a gratitude jar as well. So yeah. we've got these flags and wait hang on this is the really funny flags thing. okay the flags are for you to write down all the stuff you're grateful about to poke <gasps> into the cake and then that's your kitty cat oh my god <laughs> <laughs> oh my god you guys <laughs> what's so, a moo guys yeah oh they're so sweet so this oh, you is guys for you so to sweet. yeah decorate your cake whichever way you want and then this icing if you want to decorate your cake or I could help you with it or please help me you yes want. please help me but oh my gosh this picture of Momo is the best and like they made sure to get his like terrible <laughs> like his tummy here <laughs> it's hilarious oh my gosh this is the best okay also, yeah I'm gonna put Momo in the middle yes <laughs> Oh, so this is a gratitude cake? Yeah, whatever. Yeah, a gratitude cake. Nice. So good. And whatever you like. Yes. Yeah, you can use all of it or not and whatever you feel like. Okay. Yeah. I, I think I have most of it. Great. So <laughs> as you put it in, tell us tell us what you're grateful for in your gratitude okay, birthday come. cake. So the first so this is the gratitude flags that I'm gonna put this podcast. Oh, for doing this lovely gratitude cake. Okay. Yay. RB Katie, which Your is fan club? my fan club. Yeah. Who have stuck with me through thick and thin. Very grateful for them. That's awesome. My dad's health. Aww. So my dad had a um like had multiple heart attacks last year and it was kind of touch and go there for a while, but he just mm -hmm. bounced back from it from a situation that I mean a friend always reminds me like he's really lucky to be alive so right. my dad's health awesome until yeah so that I have more time to visit him mm. in New Zealand so my followers on my Instagram who are so awesome yeah and uh, who always leave you know you know who you are the ones who always leave comments okay my M's which is one of it is there oh some icing dropped down Oops. so my M's are my cats <laughs> <laughs> yes I'm grateful for them and then oh the last one that I am alive yes Okay. I feel like we should also like light the cake and sing you a song. But let me put these first. Yeah. I, I'm pretty sure this is going to turn out quite disastrous. <laughs> it's going to go all over the table, <laughs> right? Yes, I think so. <laughs> oh no, will it sing or not, Jean? Uh, like, tell try? me. Uh, oh, it ah, does! does! Okay, okay, okay. Oh, so cute. Oh, very oh, nice, oh, very oh, nice, oh. very nice. Awesome. Okay. So good. A one and a two and a one, two, three. <laughs> Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday to Rayan. <laughs> Happy birthday to you. Yay. Thank you. Thank you so much for being here with us today. I'm very happy to do this, actually. Yeah, I'm really, really glad you're here to share as well. And also to wrap up our season mm. of uh, the Are You OK podcast. So I hope you've learned a little something as well, watching this episode and through all the episodes that we've had all these amazing guests. Um, what a journey it's been through the 10 episodes. Thank you so much for watching, guys. See ya! Thank you. Bye-bye. We're not, gonna, we're not gonna make you do it though, JJ. I, I just I just keep picturing of myself choking on the yeah. water. Like, you breathe in, uh -huh. and you go like, oh. JJ Lin would be so proud. <laughs> oh, excellent! <laughs> it's a ridiculous cat song. <laughs> As I look into my eyes, <laughs> can grow up to be whatever you want to be. Be a big, proud, 
moisturize plant in a few days, okay? It could be sunlight, it could mm. be like, you know, you like right warm spring water. Warm spring you know, like water. Going I look, mine looks like a wish that's five years old. I'm also making myself a witch in solidarity. <laughs> mine looks like a Chinese New Year lantern. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> oh yeah, mm -hmm. looking so cute. <laughs> wow, uh, you're so good at this topic. Uh, you get a thousand points. Hey! There's so much more value to, to something like this. So I'm very thankful that I can be sitting here and doing this today. Me too. Yeah. <laughs> Are you okay? I am not okay. <laughs> After all.